Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, young and old, any age, how are you guys doing today? Welcome on back to the channel once again. Uh, the video today I'm going to bring you is quite different uh, than the last few montages, but it's not going to be a montage at all. It's actually going to be a discussion. I don't want to get too much into detail because, well, I just want you to hear what I have to say in this video. But uh, in case you're new, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Comment down below what you want to see next, what character I should use. But uh, without further ado, I don't want to keep you guys up and uh, let's just get into the video shall we see you around warning viewer discretion advised watch at your own risk or don't plan to watch at all now for those of you who don't know what smash legends is smash legends is a game made by five men labs that is based on with characters from various fairy tales and it is mostly a team game most of it evolving a game mode called Team Touchdown. The objective of this game mode is simple. Two teams of three have to fight and escort the robots to the goal. Checkpoints must be captured though in order to achieve the goal. However, there will be many checkpoints depending on the map. There is also competitive Team Touchdown, but I'm going to explain that in another part of this video. But right now, there's also Duel 1v1s. Objective of this mode, also easy. All you have to do is a 1v1 and first 3 kills wins. Or, if it's a tie, whoever has more health gets the win. Various gameplays and various combos can be achieved and it can also be used to learn and practice combos with many characters. However though, uh, these modes have some downfalls and that's where I'm going to get in right now. Recently in the game's later updates, they added a feature where we can get free daily coins. That was a pretty cool feature, but they're still missing something. Ways to get free gems without having to pay 100 bucks. Like they got rid of the daily rewards that would give you like 5 to 10 gems every week. The credit cap is just honestly ridiculous. Matchmaking can be somewhat of a big problem. And the game is slowly getting boring and it's starting to die because they're just not advertising the game to make the player base grow so big and that's why the player charts are like this and there's many reasons to why it's like that well first of all let's just go dive into competitive mode shall we sometimes in this little matchmaking you can just be sitting in queue for a good five to ten minutes probably maximum at 20 minutes and then you'll probably get a server error because of the amount of time it took to try to get you into a game However, when you do get into a game, your screen is going to look like this. This mode has a drafting system where each of you will pick three characters, one for each person on the team. And if that person is taken, then unfortunately you cannot have it because we cannot have two of the same characters in a game. Now what this mode needs is a banning system, that way we can get rid of these two and keep banning them so that way cheap people don't even have to use and they can use a character that actually requires skill. And the time limit for this mode is apparently 10 minutes because I found this on a reddit post and that's pretty long. And nobody likes long games honestly because they just want to keep climbing up the ranks. Unless you're just one of those guys who think long games are actually better then go ahead. You can ruin your mentality because of how you know how poorly you play or how poorly you know your teammates play and it can be frustrating to handle loss when a game goes that long. Or you're actually one of those people who agree with me that it gets boring when it gets longer because of the long respawn times and the amount of intensity that it doesn't bring as much as like it did in the Dominion mode. This just in, in the Space Phase 04 news headline, CM Gene and the developers of Smash Legends admit that lack of communication is why Gumi, the new character for next season, wasn't introduced like she normally would with the, like the other characters were in the past few days. And that's also another frustrating part, why the game developers can't communicate and keep the game fun. Because I have so many friends who have quit this game because it's not fun, not new updates are just arriving and we just need a lot more content like free gems. Hey, I just got a Discord notification. Let's check it out. Oh, that is a major yikes. As a Master Cat main, I'm pretty disappointed. Video was made by my good friend Hikaru, also known in, in here as Gotten Fever, Gotten Fracture, I can't even say it right. Video is in the description below, but anyways, let's get back on topic. 
Now what you just saw was a ex prime example of what toxicity is in this game's community. If you've seen my recent videos, which were like one year as a DF member or Smash Legends community's hidden dark colors, then you probably get the point on why I see the community this way. People would go on and start barking at each other, biting each other, fighting each other basically because of if they win against one another and they would start sending SS. Now if you don't know what SS is, it's basically a screenshot of you, um, your recent match. And you're trying to call out the person who you beat to get them angry or do whatever the heck to provoke them and all that. Some people might just do it for the first time and not even be aware about the punishments for that. Or they can just do it because they beat a person who they hate. And I have a lot of people who I have a lot of grudges against, but I don't post that much SS like I used to because I don't want to be that toxic person. And basically trying to have a little kitty argument with the person is just a complete waste of my time and space in this earth. Normally what people would do is that if they're in the Discord server, they would just like ping you and try to talk smack with you. And then, you know, you never know if they're going to challenge you to 1v1, you'll smack them up real good. Or if you'll lose and you'll just have to move forward. However, though, as you know me, I hate toxicity. I hunt those kind of people along with passive players. If you have anyone that is toxic to you, come find me and I will challenge them to a 1v1, especially to those who call me and my mates passive. And it's not just the members of the server. I mean, there's also Jean, the, the server's community manager. She would often abuse her powers and just ban people for the wrong reasons, not let anyone in after they verified their email and phone because they think it's because she thinks it's me as another alt account trying to get in the server. But what mainly concerns me is that she let the toxic people, like a few months ago, stay in the server while the people trying to like stand up for themselves against them would get banned. And that's just not cool, and especially for a community manager who's trying to keep us updated on the game and the developers and all of that. Like, I don't think a community manager would actually do that and would actually treat people the same as every other person in this earth. And because of that, those are another reason why players keep leaving and quitting the game, making the player base drop once more. Yep, welcome to Emote 101, where you can use a bunch of emotes to express yourself, express others how you feel, make them mad, or do whatever the heck you want to do with them. Most people use emotes to like try and taunt people, but I have certain ways on why I use them. For example, I use Wolf's I Refuse for saying that was punished, or not today. You can use this one for why are you being so passive, or what in the world was that? This. Uh, this is just my signature emote, I just spam it all the time, for funs. And this one I would normally use if I was the one who got punished, which I should have known like if a move was gonna happen and I got punished for it. Take note on this example here. My opponent does an air skill and I immediately punish him into the fire. He tries to air attack and I immediately punish him again, giving him that no, you shouldn't have done that because that was punishable. And over here you'll see I'll dodge an air skill and I'll say no, not today, because he almost got me, but I won. Here in this game, you'll see, like, I don't know what he was trying to do there, but I don't recall any Master Cat players would try to do that. And that's why I pulled out that emote, and I'm like, cause like, what was that? I've never seen someone do that before, or try it, because it was so predictable. And over here, you can see I used my ult, but I kind of used it a little too early, making myself super highly damaged, and yep. And that's where I pulled that emote, because I'm like, oh no, I kind of made myself take high damage. But I still managed to pull this game off, see just like that, predictable. And same thing here, because as a Master Cat main, it's kind of not that hard to predict what your opponent's going to do next. But GG's this guy. Another thing that I find funny about emotes is when you're on the winning team or on the losing team, and then you can check the statistics and see how well you did and how well your opponents or your teammates did. Take this for example, I lost a game, and I got emoted on, but what am I happy about? That he was in the bottom of the board of all players. And maybe emoting can also have its negative effects, causing you to have instant karma and lose the game. But to make a long explanation short, emotes are just a way to express oneself. Everyone has the right to use it, you can't control whether they can or cannot use it. And uh, basically your actions and reactions will be based upon either your gameplay or your mentality. Because sometimes emoting, to s emoting someone and then losing to them can be certainly frustrating. All you have to do is just rise up and continue to fight back and maybe, you know, watch your replays and take your LSS lessons and figure out what you need to improve on. And why did I decide to tell you what my emote set means in all four individual emotes? Well, just so I can clarify that I'm not a toxic person. 
So basically, in conclusion, short and to the point, Smash Legends is just in a very poor state right now because of the lack of communication of the devs and the toxicity the community has, and basically the kind of unfair balances and patches that I've seen, but a few of them haven't been that bad, like the recent ones. But what I have seen though is I'm gonna see Robin getting a huge nerf, health nerf, which is gonna be so beneficial. Uh, Master Cat's now gonna get five bars for his health, but that's not gonna stop me because I know a bunch of chains and combos and everyone's pretty afraid of me when I play Master Cat. And are my hopes for the game to become better are rising? Eh, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Right now they dropped because a lot of my friends who I would always play with have recently quit the game due to the game not being so good within the past few days with the, with the bad matchmaking and the toxic community, like I said earlier. But with this update and Gumi coming out, I kind of look forward to this and I hope the game can improve. But anyhow, uh, this has been the state of SL in my view. Uh, I really don't care if you agree with me or disagree with me. We all have opinions, but uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments section down below. Uh, don't forget to join my Discord if you ever want to. I won't force you. Follow and be sure to check out my social media on Twitter and Instagram. With that being out of the way, I hope you guys have a great, awesome, amazing day. And stay safe and healthy and don't do anything stupid. I'll see you all around. Thank <laughs> you.